culture. Now, he's been described as one of the world's great visionary pianists and composers. Pioneering American jazz musician Randy Weston has been speaking to France Van Gett's Jade Barker about his vast and varied musical career. After more than six decades in the business and at the ripe age of 87, he's still touring the world and will be performing here in Paris this weekend as part of the Festival Banlieue Bleu. He told Jade that growing up in Brooklyn, surrounded by a rich musical culture, greatly influenced his career. See, the ancestors taught us your first lesson is in your mother's womb. Your second lesson is the black church, is the creator. No matter what religion, we're just talking about the creator, you know? And then comes music. So in our neighborhood, you had to take violin or trumpet or piano, you name it, it was required. And that's the way it was. And the people were not economically rich at all, going through a period of segregation and whatnot. But we had the big bands, we had the blues concert, we had everything. So I grew up in a very rich environment. And you can catch the full interview with Randy Weston on our Encore program. That's at uh, quarter past 5 p.m. Paris time today. Moving on now to from a music legend to artistic greats. They are some of the most famous names of the Impressionist movement, Monet, Pissarro and Renoir. You've no doubt seen some of their iconic works before, but now you have the chance to check out some of their lesser known paintings. It's part of Paris's Musée Marmottan's 80th birthday celebrations, as Kitty van Gorgistani explains. <laughs> For its 80th birthday, the Musée Marmottan is staging a very special exhibition. Impressionist masterpieces from Pissarro, Monet or Renoir are on display. But not their most famous pieces. These are works from private collections that have either never been displayed or very rarely been shown to the public. This is a rare exhibition. We never have the opportunity to see these paintings that belong to private collectors. Even if you've gone to all the exhibitions, you never see these. Among the pieces, dozens of paintings and this sculpture, Edgar Degas' little dancer, aged 14. About 50 collectors from around the world contributed to the exhibition, a sign of the unwavering interest for the Impressionist movement. It's a movement that is absolutely not outdated, and despite the skyrocketing prices of contemporary art, young people, young art lovers are still creating beautiful collections. Some of the paintings were only known through their black and white pictures and inventories. Claude Monet's Sur les planches de Trouville, painted in 1870, was kept away from the public for over a hundred years. The museum's selection retraces the entire history of Impressionism. The exhibition opens with the movement's early days with landscapes by Corot, Jonkind, and Boudin. Then come the 1870s, with a dozen paintings from Monet, Pissarro and their peers. Artists that focused on capturing light. The specificity of this movement and what shocked academic painters of the time is that they got rid of all the details because they wanted to capture the light. And light effect only lasts for a few seconds. Impressionists innovated by shifting the focus from the subject to the surroundings. Through small, thin, yet visible brush strokes, artists gave an accurate depiction of light and its changing qualities, a way to accentuate the effects of the passage of time. With just a few strokes, they create amazing movement, impressions and feelings. In some paintings, you can almost hear the noise that could come from the scene. All that comes from a soft range of elements. There is a certain sensitivity in the choice of colors. You can see the difference between Berthe Morisot, who has thicker brush strokes, and others like Pissarro, who use thinner strokes. The exhibition closes with the work of those who explored the boundaries of Impressionism, paving the way for future artistic revolutions.
that's it for culture now a good night for 